Hey, it's Andrew. I'm a fisheries biologist with the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources, and I deal with aquatic invasive species, which are just plants and animals that get introduced into aquatic habitats outside of where they're typically found. Did you know the best way to avoid impacts caused by species invasions is prevention? Aquatic invaders that become problems in Kentucky are typically very good at surviving in new environments. And once they're established in their new home, they become very difficult and expensive to manage and often near impossible to eradicate. As a matter of fact, the cost of invasive species has dramatically increased over the last 50 years, and something like 42% of endangered or threatened plants and animals are known to be at risk due to species invasions. Because aquatic invaders have traits that make them hardy and easy to propagate, they overlap well with common animals in trade. So, what are some of the options for plants or animals that overgrow their enclosures or outgrow their tanks? Well, first, make a life plan for your pet. Know how big they will get and what resources they will require over their lifetime and plan accordingly. Next, you can get involved with pet groups. Many aquarists and other communal groups will swap and trade advice in addition to plants and pets and may be interested in giving your overgrown organism a comfy new home. You can also check with your local pet store or nursery. Some have adoption programs that you can take advantage of. And lastly, remember to never take a foreign plant or animal and intentionally release it into a local waterway. And together we can help stop aquatic hitchhikers and protect Kentucky's waters from invasive species. This is Marcy Anderson with the Fishing Report for Southeast Kentucky. Winter weather continues to wreak havoc on fishing plans. Water temperatures are currently in the low 40s on area water bodies and there had been some ice cover on smaller lakes and coves over the past week. Water clarity had been improving in some of the upper sections of the lakes, but with more rain in the forecast, muddy conditions will likely persist. Lake Cumberland lake levels have been falling due to around-the-clock generation schedules. The black bass bite has been somewhat slow, but smallmouth bass are being picked up while fishing jigs and swim baits on the main lake points and shallow pockets on the lower end of the lake. On the Cumberland tailwater, generation schedules have made it somewhat tough to get out on the water, but it's prime season for targeting walleye and sauger near the dam using jigs and minnows. On Dale Hollow, lake levels have been high, but have been falling over the course of the week. Anglers are having some success catching smallmouth bass on live baits and jigs while targeting steep banks in 20 to 35 feet of water. Largemouth bass are targeting schooling shad in 25 to 30 feet of water. Rainbow trout stockings are occurring at several lakes across the state. Locally, Cannon Creek Lake near Middlesboro and Wood Creek Lake near London are getting stocked the first part of February. Area Fins Lakes, including the Brickyard Ponds in Barberville and Logan Hubble Park near Stanford, are also getting stocked. Try using spinners and small crankbaits to increase your chance at catching trout in area lakes this winter. Trout stocking schedules can be found on the website at fw.ky.gov. So good luck and stay safe out on the water. This is Jason Russell with your Eastern District Fishing Report. Most lakes across the district have returned to winter pool levels. Currently we are seeing widespread ice on a number of area lakes, especially in the shallow upper lake sections. At some locations, only the lower lake ramps and access points are currently open. Warmer temperatures and significant rainfall is predicted in the short rain forecast, so look for conditions to change significantly in the next few days on these larger reservoirs. Paintsville Lake was stocked with rainbow trout on February 1st at the marina. There is currently no ice on the lower end of the lake and there should be great opportunity to catch trout from the marina down to the dam. Due to weather and road conditions, trout stockings at Milo in Martin County and Kingdom Come in Harlan County have been temporarily postponed. Please watch for stocking updates on our website at fw.ky.gov. With the changes in weather expected this week, smaller lakes in the area will offer the best opportunity with less impacts from rainfall. A number of these locations were also stocked with trout in January, including Grants Branch in Pike County, Fish Pond in Letcher County, as well as Cranks Creek and High Splint Lakes in Harlan County. For other recent updates, the Goble Branch boat ramp at Dewey Lake is currently closed for repairs. These repairs will likely be ongoing for a couple of weeks into February, extending slightly past the predicted deadline. Current progress is showing good progress so far on the ramp construction and also going to be redoing the courtesy dock at that location. Hi, this is Eric Cummins with your Southwest Kentucky Fishing Report. Barren River Lake is about 14 foot below Summer Pool, but will likely be on the rise with the expected rainfall coming midweek. 
Bass have been slow with some action on jigs and swim baits. This is a good time of year to try float and fly in those mid to lower ends of the lake on the main lake points. Crappie have been fair with tubes and minnows in about 10 to 20 foot of water on lay downs or channel drops. Blue catfish bite has been good fishing the flats near the drop offs with cut bait or life shad. Green River Lake is at winter pool but again is likely to rise with the rain coming midweek. Bass have been fair with slower presentations like jigs, crawdads, and swim baits. Again, the float and fly opportunity is good in the mid to lower sections of both the Robinson Creek and Green River Arms. Crappie have been fair on brush piles and drop offs in 10 to 25 foot of water. Muskie have been fair near lay downs and those stained areas with jerk baits and swim baits. Consider fishing a trout stream near you for holdover trout, even at access sites that are well downstream of stocking sites, as the trout tend to move a good bit during the winter months. Cumberland tailwater is still running wide open with three plus generators or more. Fishing up into the feeder creeks will yield trout and perhaps a mixed bag of bass, rock bass, or white bass. As always, good luck and good fishing and be sure your life jacket's got your back.